Ricky Time on the Fly. What's up, everybody? Sean Wiggins here, alongside myself, Rev Hansen. Uh, we're going back. Since it's we're in the spirit, I'm going to be uploading this right around Valentine's Day. I thought I'd show you a blast from the past from 2001. Valentine's Day 2001. There I am with my long hair. This is Lodi, New Jersey at the Lodi Boys and Girls Club. <clears throat> Jersey Championship Wrestling, JCW. Uh, sorry about that. So this is, Ray, well, you already saw it in the description. There he is, Little Spike Dudley, fresh off of ECW television. <clears throat> and there is JCW security behind him. Got to have JCW security out there or else, uh, you know, someone could run in and jump on the wrestlers. There's my man, Scott Finkelstein, who gave me all those great pictures. Uh, <clears throat> Spike Dudley now. <laughs> Who's, I think that's Foxy's little brother, actually. That was Foxy. I don't know if you remember Foxy from my channel. That was her little brother that got Spike Dudley's glasses. Uh, Spike was fresh off ECW here. Um, and I'm surprised by how small he was, but how good he was. I don't know if that makes any sense. I might have just... It might have sounded like I was crapping on him. But uh, this is the first time I'm ever meeting Spike. First time I'm ever refing for Spike. And I gained a lot more respect for him after I refereed for him. He was, uh, he's really is an underrated performer uh, in this craft. He really is. So he's very versatile. And his opponent is going to be my favorite indie ref, uh, my favorite independent wrestler, one of my favorite independent wrestlers of all time, Reckless Youth. The guy who should have, should have gotten more than he got. But it's the age old story in this industry. He was, uh, well, oh, that guy's a good worker. Um, he was probably the best in this area at that time. Uh, but, he, you know, he didn't dress the part, and he didn't have the body for it. He's coming to the ring with, as you can see, he's got three geysers, Don Montoya, and the Inferno Goof, uh, the Inferno Kid, excuse me, um, who was number five in my death pool forever. He's moved up to number three. Um... Reckless Youth, this is the Black Teeth. No, this was the Jersey Triad, is what they were called here in JCW at that time. Um, can't believe I remember that. I got a pretty good memory. Um, Reckless Youth, as you see, he's got the black cutoff t shirt and blue shorts. It's kind of what he wore. He didn't really have a look. It was just kind of kind of what he wore. And uh, Don Montoya screwed with me. I should have beat his ass. But um, I'm going to let these two st stick around ringside for this contest in Lodi. Boy, is that VCR quality or what? Um, I noticed somebody on this channel. I forget. If I didn't read the name. I should have. I apologize. Asked for more matches with guys like Reckless Youth and Rick Blade and Nick Burke. And I'm going to be looking for those uh, guys' matches. I know I have a few. But I want to get this one on there. As I was uh, very excited to referee for Spike Dudley at this time as well. I was... I, I'm brand new. I'm maybe a year and a half in, and I was looking forward to working with anybody who worked in a big fed before. Um, not to say I wasn't happy to referee for anybody, but you just pick things up from guys who work TV. And I'll tell that to anyone who's starting now. You're just going to pick things up because they've done it before, no matter how good they are. The old adage, you can learn from good wrestling, you can learn from bad wrestling, you can learn from shit wrestling, you can learn from great wrestling. Solid chain maneuvers here by Spike. That's what I mean by Spike. Like I, I, not that I didn't think he was good before I refed for him, but when I saw him doing stuff like this, I was like, wow, you're like better than you think. And lo and behold, two months later, he debuted on WWF TV. <clears throat> and rightfully so. And the other thing about Spike, you're not going to find many guys who dislike him. You might uh, say, oh, he drinks too much. Oh, he doesn't... But you're never going to say, I hate Spike. Nobody's ever said that. Not once. Cool as shit. Guy's awesome. Nice hit. He's not going to remember me from Adam, even though we've actually met numerous times. But uh, Raven tells a story of when he, him and Hacksaw Jim Duggan actually hung out. They were on a loop together in WCW, and they went and saw the movie Basketball and a couple others, and they, like, smoked pot together in their car. And that was, But that was it. That's the only time they ever, like, got together and hung out. So... If you don't make an impression on somebody, you're just a toady. So he might, I'd have to remind him of who I was. Nice shoulder tackle by Spike. And great solid wrestling out of these two. And that's just how good Reckless was. 
Reckless could call all this stuff in the back, picture it in his head, and just do it. Um, <clears throat> for those of you that don't know Reckless Youth, don't know his backstory, he was signed to Memphis for the WWF at that time with the Haas brothers, a few others. Uh, Bobcat is another one. who uh, He was in Memphis, and he had a house up here, and he's paying for an apartment down there, and WWF was paying him, what, 500 bucks a week at that time. Oh, yeah, you're going to be on TV next week. Yeah, yeah, no, we got you. We got something for you. We got something for you. We got something for you. Eventually quit. And I, I see why. I mean, he was just, I think they wanted to put a Richard Simmons gimmick on him. <clears throat> Would it have worked? Probably not. This was right in the beginning of the Attitude Era. Don Montoya. Ah, it sucks he's going to pull his pants up. That's a shit. And Danny the Inferno Goof. Um, he's got the heat with me. Oh, nice reversal. Reckless. Ooh. Good stuff here. That building was, uh, interesting. It was up on the second floor, and you can't see it. Ah! The plan was good, but the execution wasn't all there. You can see those windows up there. That's where all the wrestlers were. No, in front. No. Oh, no. What? <laughs> I like that spot. Um... That window I just pointed to, as you can see in your top right corner, is all the wrestlers could watch the matches from up there. And the fans never knew it, but once once you knew that all the wrestlers could watch from there, you're like, how does not every fan look up and see? But they didn't. And uh, you'd get away with it. But uh, this is the building where the infamous Billy Real jacked it in a water bottle and emptied it into Kevin Knight's bag. That happened in this building uh, a few months before this. Reckless, nice reversal, double reversal, triple reversal. And rec no, Montoya, <laughs> see their plan didn't go. See, oh, you devilish heels. Spike now, oh. Nice presence of mind by me to not look. Oh, and Reckless now telling me that he just slipped. And dummy, dopey ref myself is believing him. And Reckless, uh, very smart. There's Gar uh, referee uh, Ring of Honor stooge Gary Morer, who uh, is of the homosexual gender and used that to his advantage in Ring of Honor. And uh, you know, those things happen. You can see him. He's wearing that JCW shirt. He's the quote unquote security. And man, only if I knew as a fan what I knew as a worker. Like, I would just, if I knew that he was the uh, security guy, I'd just push his ass out of the way. Like, what the hell is he going to do? But, you know, when you're a fan, you don't know any better. You're like, oh, no, I have to listen. I'll get thrown out. Guy weighs 40 pounds, two bricks in his pocket, soaking wet. Reckless, nice leg lariat. Nicely done. <clears throat> Two great wrestlers here, really. And I hope Spike isn't just remembered for being quote-unquote little Spike Dudley. I hope he's remembered as being a, as a really good technician. And the, the old Bret Hart thing. Or no, Kevin Nash said it. Oh, how they talk about me in the car. Ah, he was a good worker. Ah, he was a good little hand. Uh, he should be remembered as being a guy. I, I, that's what I always thought anyway. <clears throat> Watching him and listening to him call matches in the back and the whole bit. I'm trying to look in the crowd. There! Oh my God, in the front row, you see two girls talking above Reckless's head. Oh, you can't see them now. There it is. One of them is Donna. She actually gave me a lot of pictures. From my... The other one next to her on the right, we called her Lurch. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why it's so funny, but she always wore a black leather trench coat and she had a big, long neck. It's really weird. I, I never had a conversation with her. I saw her 700 times. She had weird teeth, too. But we called her Lurch. And she had a big crush on uh, Ray Sager, who was booking for JAP. And, you know, no girl ever had a crush on Ray Sager. So we're like, ah, you should bang her, Ray, you should bang her. Huh, just a weird little backstory, somebody sitting in the crowd. I actually like my hair here. I actually cut it kind of short. I still look like a chick, but still, I mean, at least it wasn't a big old mop. I taped my hands here because literally... Uh, my right hand right there, I remember this vividly. I ref for JP maybe a couple weeks before, and I refed a New Jack match. Uh, fuck you, New Jack. I don't care if you're dead, you were a dick. Every time I saw New Jack, he was a dick. Anyway, I counted 
uh, Count. I think he was wrestling Low Life Louie or whoever he was wrestling. I count. Oh, uh, Ivan. He was in Skinhead Ivan, and I counted right on his shovel. He bought a metal shovel in the ring, and I was so amped up that I counted right on it, and I sliced my hand. Thank God I didn't hit nothing. Nice reversal, reverse, and Montoya with the cell for his buddy Reckless. But it cut it pretty bad, so I started taping it, and I was like, well, I don't want to look stupid. I'll tape the other hand. And so instead of, you know, back then I thought that was smarter to do. Low Life Louie actually taught me to tape my hands like that. He's like, you know... Oh, nice. Top rope dive. They all fed nicely. Uh, Louis like, oh, so, you know, it, it's a good way of hiding your cut. And it looks like you're just, you know, quote unquote working. Well, I take the other hand and I wound up looking goofier, but whatever. At least I didn't bleed all over the ring. Spike Dudley now th going back inside, trying to finish off Reckless Youth. Hope you guys enjoy my little side stories that I go. I always go off on tangents and I go all over the place, but. Spike, nice, Harararana, as Farouk would say. Uh, one, two, that pin, oh, and Inferno interrupting my count. Nicely done, though, it doesn't, oh, nice catch. See, Spike pulls stuff like that out. <clears throat> when he worked in ECW, he was the quote-unquote giant killer, but he was so much more than that. And I, I know he, he was, he didn't have the size to do, I don't want to say anything else, but he didn't have the size to just be a great cruiserweight. He had to have like a gimmick to him. And again, nothing wrong with that. It's just, it does hamper you when you have a gimmick attached to you. But he used it to the best of his ability and he was in WWE for years. But Spike Dudley, cool as shit. Spike, if you ever see this, I uh, I like you a lot. You were cool as shit. Uh, you probably don't remember me from Adam, but I like you. Reckless, if you're out there, you're the fucking man. I miss that guy. Uh... Again, like he would have been nice maneuver. If he stuck around the indies, see nobody really wants to stick around the indies eventually. You eventually get tired of it. Unless you're a goof like Papa Don. Then you'll stick around for forty years and try to make it. But uh if there was an evolve and a ring of honor and its thickness and this, I, reckless youth would have been all over it. Um there's back elbow and oh let me check on oh I remember this. Checking on Spike and uh, oh Spike no no Oh no! Oh no! No! He hit he hit me with it! Uh, I Spike took that eye gouge. I bet he thought that was reckless youth. The acid drop. I bet he thought that was reckless, but unfortunately it was me, and now the Jersey Triad's gonna have their way with Spike Dudley. Well set up by reckless youth. I remember my girlfriend at the time. I told her how like excited I always was to work with Reckless. He, he would come up with these things. I think Reckless called that. Spike might have been down for it, but I really think Reckless called that. And now Spike, he nails Reckless with the acid drop. That could be it. But there's nobody home to count because Spike inadvertently got me with it. Oh, but no. Eh, Steve Paradiso. The greatest ref of all time, if you don't count 1,100 other guys, late to run in and make the count, but he got there. Ring that bell! I saw Steve, he came into my paint store, well, not my paint store, the paint store I was working at years later, and I didn't see him in a while. He still looks the same, probably not now. This is 2001, it's 20 years ago now. And I got up, oh, I got up. And I'm explaining to Steve Paradiso that no, 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 the JCW Heavyweight Championship. I should have crawled. And I stood up. So you refs, you new refs watching this, don't do what I just did. Crawl, roll over, and tap Steve. See, unfortunately, Spike, you nailed me with the acid drop. And now Reckless Youth is going to win by disqualification. Because Spike, unfortunately, hits me. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Arrivederci and ciao. Reckless Youth gets the victory over little Spike Dudley. But don't worry, Spike. Greener skies ahead. You're going to the WWF a couple months from here. This was Valentine's Day 2001. So remember, guys, buy all your broads some Valentine's Day gifts. They're going to need them. They're going to want them. Hook them up. Hope you enjoyed this blast in the past. Please drive safe. Signing off.